On the 3rd of May, 2023, Matt Hamilton, who had previously held a high-level executive position at Ripple, declared something that was shocking. He disclosed the work that Ripple has been doing to establish a one-of-a-kind XRP ledger that is intended for digital currencies that are issued by central banks. Hamilton went over the fact that companies who deal in cryptocurrencies are now striving to enhance a private version of the XRP ledger for digital currencies that are supported by the government. His comments carried a lot of weight due to the fact that he had previously served as Ripple's head of developer relations. They even submitted photographs on this mystery forum that showed the shocking price of XRP, which was $327,000, which caused a rush of rumors to spread. It is imperative that you remember to ring the bell and click the subscribe button in order to obtain the most up-to-date information regarding all of our XRP chats. Do you enjoy the information that I create? To express your appreciation, please give it a thumbs up and share your ideas in the comments section under the post. A flurry of disputes questioning the true value of XRP on this private version, as well as the existence of the ledger itself, were ignited as a result of this announcement. On the other hand, the story becomes more difficult at this point. An episode of a podcast that we stumbled onto not too long ago made reference to the Republic of Palo. What is the significance of this? It is essential to keep in mind the previous partnership between Ripple and the Republic of Palo, in particular the time when they carried out the world's first stablecoin trial by utilizing the XRP ledger. Theoretically, these stakeholders ought to be notified about the intricacies of the existence of this mysterious ledger, as well as the price of XRP on this ledger. In today's episode, we find the answer to this mystery. Take a look at this video, which includes the Minister of Finance of the Republic of Palo. Get ready, because he goes into a lot of depth on the debate between public and private ledgers, the foundation of the stablecoin, and the potential future value of XRP. This is the video, so let's get right to it. The transparency of the public XRP ledger was the primary factor that helped us make our decision. It has always been extremely important for us to communicate our ongoing projects and milestones in an open and honest manner. So far, the trip has been worthwhile, despite the fact that there have been some challenges. This work is not only groundbreaking but also an experiment and a trial. Through it all, Ripple's aid has been absolutely necessary in order to triumph over these challenges. At the very end of the video, it is easy to see. The Finance Ministry of the Republic of Palo placed a high premium on ensuring that the public ledger was completely transparent. Because it does not either confirm or deny the existence of a secret ledger. Their argument, on the other hand, does not rule out the possibility that such a ledger does exist. The value of XRP on this alleged private ledger has piqued the interest of significant numbers of individuals. We have discovered another podcast, and we are going to broadcast a sample of the audio from that podcast. It is via this that we will have an understanding of the speculative pricing of XRP in this underground market. According to a thought that is generally acknowledged, the public and private ledgers might eventually converge. In the event that this is true, it is possible to aggregate their prices in order to obtain an average. But this is still speculation because there is no real evidence to support it. David Short, who is more commonly known throughout the world as the Chief Technology Officer of Ripple, was present throughout these meetings. In this section, we will investigate the anticipated pricing for XRP on the private ledger. While it is not yet final, it provides an indication of the potential value that the private ledger might attribute to XRP that is currently being considered. Because of the extremely complicated nature of the ledger, there is a private ledger, as I have mentioned in the past and will reiterate here. This is not something that just took place by any means. I witnessed this to take place in a video that was live streamed on YouTube from Japan. Additionally, the existence of a public ledger is discernible from the five minute video that was shown. What is the real test at this point? With regard to XRP, what is the distinction between the private ledger notes and the public ledger notes? As difficult as this work is, it is impossible to overestimate how difficult it is. In spite of all these complexities, this is the most important point I want to make. Eventually, I am convinced that the distinctions between public and private ledgers will become less clear and that they will be combined into a single ledger. Soon, there will be a convergence of events. On the other hand, before that day arrives, we require regulations that are robust and clear. This ensures that there will be no misunderstandings when they eventually collaborate on a project from the beginning. I have been informed that the trial phase of this private ledger is currently being carried out. An important new development is being brought about by the Bank of Japan, which is more commonly referred to as SBI. They made the announcement not too long ago that they intend to begin lending XRP. A significant problem exists here. It is a sign that large financial institutions are showing a significant amount of interest in XRP. The introduction of this new loan service brings to light the objective of the bank, which is to use XRP for transactions with institutions. To add insult to injury, this raises the question of why Japan would invest in XRP loans if they did not feel that the cryptocurrency would play a big role in the future. When the strategic decision made by the Bank of Japan is taken into consideration, the viewpoint that I am advocating for becomes quite persuasive. Following the completion of a number of tests and the identification of the institutional and individual appetites for XRP, they are now lending in the cryptocurrency. 
The move is not only a loaning exercise, rather, it is a strategic banking move with the intention of profiting from the expanding Bitcoin movement. Over and above its potential for speculation, XRP's attraction extends to other aspects. It is a tool that has the potential to be useful for large-scale transactions between businesses and retail customers that take place across international borders. At this very moment, a significant shift in paradigm is going place. In addition to keeping XRP, financial institutions are incorporating it into beneficial utility efforts in order to take advantage of its potential for facilitating transfer of funds within the institution as well as payments made across international borders. Ripple is developing connections with not only MasterCard's primary business but also its numerous subsidiaries such as Fluency, Consensus, ESAC, and Devrith, as well as countless others that aren't even featured here. These connections are being established through this partnership. Furthermore, rather than merely serving as an endorsement, their relationship brings attention to liquidity and the possibility of scalability. A great deal of chatter is taking place and it is not without basis. That when MasterCard and Ripple formed their partnership, they had one strategic objective in mind, and that was to use Ripple as the primary payment mechanism from the very beginning. I want to make it perfectly obvious that it is a hypothesis and a speculation that I am offering here. It is my intention to provide you with all of the information, news, and buzz that is currently going around. I want everyone to keep in mind that my hypothesis regarding the possible reasons why MasterCard might have collaborated with XRP is nothing more than a hypothesis. Indeed, they collaborated with Ripple on the project. It is common knowledge that the XRP coin and its ledger are the key on-demand liquidity sources for the RippleNet architecture. This is a fact that has been widely publicized. When they use RippleNet, they are thereby gaining access to XRP without any further effort. In spite of this, the XRP ledger will be utilized by default in the event that MasterCard decides to initiate payment processing through RippleNet. This realization, despite the fact that it is hypothetical, highlights the severity of such a partnership and the potential repercussions that that collaboration could have. Keeping in mind that I do not possess a license to practice as a financial advisor is important. The material of these films is being provided exclusively for the purpose of viewing enjoyment. I always recommend to viewers that they conduct their own research and consult with professionals before making any decisions regarding their finances. We are grateful to you for listening. It is imperative that you do not forget to click the subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. In addition, make sure that you enable the alerts so that you are the first to know regarding any new content that I submit. I am looking forward to catching up with you in the subsequent video. Take care of yourself.